in Houston, Texas. The streets of Third Ward are filled with hopelessness and despair. There is poverty, drugs, crime, and violence. However, in the midst of all of the negativity, there stands a beacon of light. It is the Progressive Amateur Boxing Association. The Progressive Amateur Boxing Association was founded in 1969 by former boxer and community activist Reverend Ray Martin Sr. Reverend Ray discovered boxing at a young age and it became a healthy way for him to channel his anger and stay out of trouble. Through boxing, Reverend Ray found discipline as well as purpose. After his boxing career, Reverend Ray wanted to do something to help the community in which he had grown up. He decided to start a boxing gym and community center to help get kids off the streets and to help them stay away from crime and drugs. His motto was simple, because you can't open a knife or fire a gun with a boxing glove on. I guess I was tremendously inspired by uh, Joe Lewis. Uh, and, and I used to listen to his fights all the time. And I, and I guess one of the things that I remember most about his fights, every time he uh, uh, finished uh, one of his fights and knocked his opponent out, uh, he got a chance to have a few words. And I had, as I say to myself, that's what I want to do. I want to become a world champion like Joe Lewis. And when I <clears throat> win, also going to have a few things to say about uh, the conditions of the uh, of the system that we, uh, as it was at that uh, particular time. Since the gym opened in 1969, the Progressive Amateur Boxing Association has helped countless young men and women stay out of trouble. By teaching them the sport of boxing, the PABA instills character in its fighters. The youths learn values such as discipline, hard work, determination, sportsmanship, and self-control. These characteristics will help them both in and out of the boxing ring and help them become successful in other areas of their lives besides boxing. One man who has been helped by the PABA's boxing program is Coach Raymond Lucky Brown. Infinite's community is pretty good, you know. As I say, they take a lot of kids that have been in trouble, gangs, and, you know, they come here and it help them give them new directions for them, for them like discipline. And, um, and, you know, mentor, we mentor the kids. And, you know, we like that big brother, you know, some like parents. And uh, we, help them, we help them stay out of trouble, you know, just give them new direction, you know, give them something that they weren't getting at home, you know. So pretty much it's just, we just help, you know, trouble team, like people that's in trouble period that, you know, they turn to PABA for help. The PABA continues to help young people today through its boxing program and community outreach. The training is intense, but in order to become a good boxer, you have to put in the work. Another young fighter who benefits from the PABA's program is Texas Southern University law student Jupiter Howard. I heard it through TSU's boxing club. That's how I first started, but then when they stopped, I just kept coming. So you're a TSU student? Yeah, I go to the law school. My overall goal is I want to win the Golden Gloves before I graduate. I plan to train as much as physically possible and just become the best place because that's the only way that you're going to be able to win. Reverend Ray Martin is still actively involved with the gym that he established over 47 years ago. However, his son, Ray Martin Jr., is the one who oversees the day-to-day -day operations at the gym. Well, my dad is the founder of the program, so I've been around um, the organization all of my life. Uh, been active in it um, since I was a child, participating in all of the programs, the summer programs, the youth boxing, and uh, other programs that we have here. I've actively been a coach here, though, since um, we're going on 23 years now. I got my certification when I was 20 years old. I'm 43 now. so. That's how long I've actively been a coach here at the PABA. The correlation, uh, the correlation of the responsibilities. Uh, well, of course, um, as I was stating earlier, it's, it's, a, it's a responsibility. 
but it's still at, at the same time, it's a, it's a rewarding fact that you have a lot of kids out here that look up to you and that depend on you um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Not only kids, but just people in the community that uh, come in uh, because not only we are a boxing gym, but we're also a community center. So people come in uh, for help for different needs. They may need bus fare. They may need something to eat. Um, and at the same time, you know, I may be in a position where I'm not doing my best, but it, they always still know that they can come to me and whatever I have, whatever the organization can do, we will do what we can in order to help. And uh, yes, it's a big responsibility, but it's like that responsibility is one of the best responsibilities I think that one can have. You know, it's a blessing to be able to see the, uh, the expressions and the look on the faces of people when you come into contact with them on a day-to-day -day basis that speak to you and they greet you and they, Ray Ray, I remember how you helped me and I appreciate this and I appreciate you looking out for my son and you were there for me when I didn't have anything. That's an honor, that's a blessing, man. And uh, I'm very humbled by that experience. And so I've grown, again, to, uh, to embrace the, the whole thing, to embrace the responsibility. Ray Jr. has always taken pride in the legacy that his father built. As he stated, throughout the years, many notable figures have graced the gym. Some were politicians, some were athletes and celebrities, but they all had one thing in common, an admiration and respect for the man affectionately known as the Fighting Preacher. One man who came to know and love Reverend Ray was none other than former heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali. On July 23, 1971, Ali and Martin met up for what was dubbed the sparring match of the century at the Astro Hall Arena in Houston, Texas. Uh, yes, yes, I did. One of the three knockdowns of Muhammad Ali took place here in this ring here at PABA. Uh, oh, that happened in, I, don't think, I think that was 71. Setting up, setting the one. He was here to fight Jim Evans out at the Astro uh, Dome. But uh, our spine match was in the Astro Hall uh, the first time I put him down. Uh, uh, the first two times it was in the Astro Hall. Because the third time it was here at PABA. So you put him down right here? Once here at PABA. And the place was packed. Because I was, uh, he had gone on the radio that day saying what he was going to, he was going to come to Houston, come in the PAB and what he was going to do to me. And we was having a boxing show that night. So the place was packed. That's when I put him down for the third time. You got a picture of him of that, of that knockdown. Yeah, yeah. Can you, can you say that you, that you, um, that you knocked down? Muhammad Ali here at the PAB. Can you just say that? Uh, For as long as there is a need, the Progressive Amateur Boxing Association will be there to train young men and women in the sport of boxing and in the game of life. The goal of the PAB is not just to help young people become successful in the ring, but to instill values and principles in them that will help them be successful in whatever they choose to do. And no matter how many champions are crowned, or how many celebrities walk through the doors of the PABA. It all started with one man and his dream of building a place where young people could learn how to fight and how to live. The fighting preacher and the legacy that he has built will always have a special place in the third ward and in the city of Houston as a whole. And where there is desire, where there is drive, and where there is commitment, the PABA will be there to nurture it and turn it into a champion both in and out of the boxing ring.